Hello, and welcome to Artful Insights. I'm Shane Farrell, the Digital Projects and Programs Manager for Arts Philadelphia, and together you and I are going to look at some art today. This video is produced in partnership between Dementia Society of America and Arts Philadelphia. Each month we offer a live program where a small group of people talk about a work of art or works of art from museums and cultural centers around the country. Uh, it's a different museum or cultural center each month. And in addition to that live program, we also produce a video like the one you're watching right now. We look at the same works of art as we did in the live group, but with the video, it's 30 to 40 minutes in length. You can watch it any time, day or night, that might suit you. And it's an opportunity to have a more intimate, self-driven conversation about the art. I'll ask a few questions to get us started, give you a few things to think about. I'll share some of the observations and thoughts that folks from the live group brought up that I think might be interesting for you to consider. But really, this video each month is about you. It's about what you see in these works of art, how you respond to them, and just having the opportunity to look at a work of art and think about it at your own pace. If you're watching this video with someone, please feel free to pause from time to time if you'd like so that you can have your own conversation. If you're watching on your own, we're delighted to have you, and it'll be a conversation just between the two of us. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to the museum or cultural center that we're visiting today. Welcome to Artful Insights. So today we're going to be traveling to Western New York, Buffalo specifically, to visit the Albright Knox Gallery. And before we get started looking at some art, I just want to introduce you a bit to the Albright Knox and tell you a little bit about it. So here we are at the Albright Knox. The Albright Knox is actually one of the oldest art institutions in the United States. It was founded in 1862, and President Millard Fillmore was one of its original incorporators. Uh, initially, it was called the Buffalo Fine Arts Academy, but now we know it as the Albright Knox. You might notice that in this picture, you see one building that looks kind of brand new and uh, bright white colored, and another building that might look a bit older than that. The older building is the original Albright Knox campus. It was finished being constructed in 1905. The newer building is actually not complete yet. It's under construction as we speak. Uh, it should be finished by 2023, if all goes according to schedule. And it's part of an improvement and expansion that the Albright Knox is trying to make right now to their facilities. The Albright Knox's collections focus primarily on contemporary and modern art, uh, but perhaps a more precise way to describe what they do is that they collect art that is of its time. So in 1862, when they started, they may have been collecting things from around that time period, and today they might be collecting things from artists that are living and working today. The way they describe what they do is our vision is to flourish as an exceptional hub of artistic and creative energies that enriches and transforms people's lives in our community, our nation, and the world. We strive for excellence, innovation, and sustainability in everything that we do. We present exhibitions, performances, and programs that challenge and inspire seek tomorrow's masterpieces while developing our world-renowned collection of modern and contemporary art, create education programs for lifelong learning and discovery, engage and empower widening inclusive audiences, and inspire open dialogue and common understanding. 
So now that we've learned a little bit about the museum, why don't we go ahead and take a look at our work of art? I'll be right back. So here we are taking a look at our artwork for today. And before I start any sort of conversation about this artwork, I just want you to take a moment to look at this artwork and see where your eye takes you. What do you notice first? How is your eye drawn through this painting? Is there anything that stands out to you? Is there anything that fades into the background a little bit? And just take some time, look over the painting, and see what you notice. And then we'll start back up again. So, now that you've had a few moments to look over this painting, what are some of the first things you noticed about it? What are some of the ways you found your eye moving from one location to the other on the painting? I'd be very curious to hear about what you noticed about this painting. One of the first things that some of our participants in our live online group noticed in this painting was the light. They noticed that this figure in particular seemed to have very bright light on his face as he looks up at the ceiling. They also notice that the light seems very bright toward the front of this room that these two figures are standing in, and then gets much darker as we move back toward the back of the painting. So perhaps the artist is trying to guide us by which things in the painting are most bright. If we were to imagine a light source of some sort in this room, where do we think that would be coming from? If there were a window or something else that's providing light to this room, where do we think it would be? Perhaps it would be somewhere outside of the painting. We don't see any windows in the painting. Perhaps further into the front of the room, there's a large window with natural light. Or perhaps some sort of candles or lamps or something like that. Since we said that the face of this figure is very brightly lit, and this figure is looking up toward the ceiling, Perhaps there could be some light coming from the ceiling. Where do you think the light in this painting might be coming from? And how does light guide our eye through the painting? Another way we might take a look at which things are important in a painting are by looking at the colors. What are the some of the colors that you notice first in this painting? One of the things our participants pointed out first in this painting was that there's a very bright blue color here on this figure's pants. He looks to be wearing some sort of shorter pants and long socks or stockings, but they're a very bright blue color which is perhaps a little bit unusual. We also noticed, of course, that there's a lot of bright red on this figure. This figure seems to be dressed almost entirely in a bright red color. 
He's wearing a bright red hat. He's wearing a bright red shirt that seems to go down into almost a, a robe. And he's even wearing bright red shoes. So two of the brightest colors in the painting led us to focus on these two figures and specifically led us to focus a bit on their clothing. And that's interesting. Maybe we should take a little bit of a closer look at the clothing of these figures. So when we look at the clothing of these two figures, what do we notice? We noticed the pants on this figure here, but this figure also has something wrapped around their waist. They're also wearing a particular type of hat, also wearing a white jacket. What do we think about the identity of this figure here that their clothing might indicate? Well, one of our participants pointed out that the hat that this man is wearing looks like the type of hat a chef might wear. Would you agree with them? I, I think I probably do agree with them that this does look like it might be a chef's hat. So perhaps this person is a chef. And as we look a little bit closer at this figure, we notice they're wearing a kind of double-breasted white jacket which does kind of look like a traditional jacket that a chef might wear. They've got this thing tied around their waist. Perhaps this thing tied around their waist could be some sort of apron. And the apron, or whatever we think it might be, has, has some different objects uh, tucked into it and perhaps tied to it right here. We see some sort of maybe cooking tools of some sort uh, that are tied around this figure's waist. Over here, I'm not sure I can tell exactly what that is. What do you think that might be? One of our participants suggested they thought it looked like this perhaps chef had a bottle of whiskey in his apron. What do you think about that? As we look back at the clothing of the figure on the right, what sort of things do we think might be indicated there? So we pointed out that this figure is wearing all this bright red color. And they're even wearing a red cap of some sort. This led our participants to think that this person seemed very important in some way. Bright red is, is a color that really draws our eye to it sometimes. And someone dressed in all bright red like this must be important in some way, we thought. Do you agree with that? Well, some of our participants said this bright red clothing and the way that this man is dressed, they thought he might be a cardinal or perhaps a bishop, some sort of religious official. Do you agree with that idea that this might be some sort of um, important religious official? I think it might make sense that someone wearing such a bright color, someone wearing this very particular type of cap, Someone wearing what looks like a robe might perhaps be some sort of religious official. It's also wearing what looks like it might be an apron around the front of him. And that's very interesting because as we talked about the figure on the left, we noticed that he was wearing a chef's hat. But the figure on the right, who we're speculating might be some sort of important religious person is the one actively wearing an apron on the front of his body. What do we think that might indicate to us? So these characters' clothing give us all sorts of clues about who they might be. 
And now that we've talked a little bit about who these characters might be, uh, why don't we talk a little bit about what the relationship between them might be? So one way we can decide what the relationship between two figures in a painting is, is to take a very close look at their expressions. So why don't we zoom in a bit and take a look at the expressions of these two figures. So one of our participants said, this figure looks very pleased with himself. And perhaps you'd agree with that. I think I agree with that. We'll notice this figure seems to be grinning a little bit. His cheek seems to be wrinkled as if he's got a big grin on his face. And his eyes are perhaps lit up a little bit with a kind of sense of satisfaction. Uh, what do you think this person is experiencing that made them make this expression and this gesture? If we were to look up at the ceiling like that and kind of grin a little bit, what do we think we would be feeling when we were doing that? Do we agree that he looks very pleased with himself? And if he's pleased with himself, what is he so pleased about? As we look at the other figure here, we might notice a very different kind of expression on this figure's face. His brow looks perhaps a little bit furrowed here. His eyes are very focused uh, downward somewhere, and they look a little bit wide in some way, as if perhaps he's surprised. His mouth is a little bit turned down at either end, so perhaps that's indicating something. Maybe he's deep in thought. Maybe he is a little dissatisfied in some way. What do we think this face is indicating to us? What do you notice about it that I haven't pointed out that might give us a window into the interior life of this figure? One of our participants said, I think this figure here is trying to figure out how to tell the figure on the right that the food he's made is not very good. What do you think about that idea? He does perhaps look as if he has some sort of surprise or perhaps consternation of some sort on his face. If this figure is in fact tasting something, and we can see that he's holding a spoon here, how do we think he feels about what he's just tasted? Do you agree with the person from our live program that he doesn't like what he's just tasted and he's trying to figure out a way to say that? Or do you think he might be experiencing something else? Maybe he really likes it. and That's why his eyes are open very widely, because he's surprised. We can tell all sorts of stories just based on the two expressions of these figures and the relationship between those two expressions. Let's take a little more time to look at these figures and what sort of story they might be telling us. So after we looked at these figures, one of the participants in the group pointed out, you know, they're not looking at each other. And that's true. They're not looking at each other. This figure's looking up kind of toward the ceiling, as we mentioned. This figure's looking down, perhaps at this spoon that he's holding. Why might these figures not be making eye contact with each other? One of our participants said, perhaps they don't like each other very much. Another participant said, I think the figure on the left 
is trying to figure out how to tell the figure on the right. So perhaps the chef, which he speculated that he might be on the left, is trying to figure out how to tell the cardinal or bishop on the right that he doesn't like his food without insulting him. Because as we mentioned, the cardinal might be a kind of important person in some way. So perhaps the figure on the left is trying to figure out how to be judicious. What sort of story do you tell yourself when you look at these two characters? Perhaps it's completely different than the one we're telling. Do you agree that perhaps they're tasting something? Maybe it came out of this pot that the cardinal or bishop is holding. You notice that the chef was holding a spoon, but the cardinal is holding a spoon as well. So perhaps they are tasting something. It's always very interesting how when we look at details like expression and like clothing and like color, we can start to formulate a story. And especially when there are people in a painting, I find, we always want to tell a story about what those people might be up to. Something else that might tell us something about the people in our painting is looking a little bit closer at the environment that they're in. So why don't we take a moment to pause and look at the painting a little bit closer and take a look at some of the things that are around the room here. What do you notice? Where does your eye go? Remember how we started off looking at color and we went to the bright blue in the pants here and the bright red in the clothing here? But there's all sorts of other colors in this painting. We barely began to scratch the surface. So perhaps as you look at this painting, you can notice some objects in the room and also use color as a way to guide you around the painting. See what you can find, and we'll be back in just a moment. So one of our participants in the live program, after looking around at the environment of this painting, said, oh, this kitchen is gorgeous. There are so many intricate details in this kitchen. When you were looking around the painting, did you notice any intricate details? One of the details that we focused on in this painting in our live discussion was this area right here. And let me zoom in just a little bit. What do we notice in this area of the painting here? As I said, our participants in the live program said, this area looks very intricate. There's a lot of detail here. It looks almost as if something is in relief on the side of the stove, perhaps, or countertop, or oven here. There's a very detailed kind of artistic embellishment on the side here. And one of our participants said, look, this right here looks like a coat of arms. 
And it does look a bit like a coat of arms. We have what could be a shield here with different colors and symbols on it. We have a crown here. What might these kinds of details tell us about the person who this room belongs to? Perhaps the person this room belongs to is important in some way. Perhaps they're very wealthy. If we look around the room a bit more, we might notice some other details where there are as very intricate, artistic looking work in the room. We might notice right here, this structure that's supporting this piece that's hanging over top of what might be the cooking area here. This is very detailed and intricate as well. Above the stove here, or countertop or oven, we have another very intricate detail. Even the chair that's sitting to the side right here looks like it might have some intricate carving work on it. So all throughout the painting, we see all these very intricate details. What might that indicate to us about the environment that we're in here? And furthermore, we've looked at some of these intricate architectural details. We've looked at the clothing of some of the figures here. We noted that the chef is wearing what look like short pants and perhaps long stockings. What time period do we think this painting might be depicting? One of our participants said that she thought this might be taking place in the 15th century. What do you think about that idea? Another one of our participants said that they thought this looked like the Victorian era. So a bit further forward in time, around the late 1800s, when do you think this painting might be taking place? And what about it shows you that? So as we continued to look around our environment, some of our participants said, look, back here, what, what are all these things? So let's zoom in a little bit on these objects back here. What do we notice going on back here? And what does this tell us about this painting and the story it might be telling? Well, one of our participants said, look right here. That looks a bit like a large piece of meat. And I wonder if you would agree with them. Does that look like a large piece of meat to you? And then as we were looking at that, one of our other participants said, look just below that, right here. That looks like some sort of dead bird, perhaps a dead duck. Do you agree that this looks like some sort of dead bird, some sort of dead duck? As we continued down and went below the table, looking here, we noticed the color green and the color red. So earlier we were looking at some of the colors. Now we've returned to that. We've looked at the colors here. Bright green and bright red colors. Perhaps some leafy green vegetables, one of our participants suggested, and perhaps some tomatoes. Down here we noticed even more. So if we look at the colors here, some, some brownish colors that we noticed, some reddish and purplish colors, perhaps, some tannish colors. One of our participants said, it looks like there's a lot of onions down here and perhaps some potatoes. So this takes us back to the story that we were telling about this piece that perhaps we're cooking something and the two figures in the painting are both tasting it. 
So you see all of what might be food items back here. All sorts of different food items. And does this look like uh, someone is preparing for a big feast, perhaps? Or does it just look like they're preparing for a very modest meal? Uh, just kind of something you might have on a, any regular day of the week. Well, one of our participants said, I wish they'd invite me over to where they are so I could try some of what they're cooking. Does this appeal to you, seeing all these ingredients, seeing the two figures, tasting what they might be cooking? Does it look like a meal you'd like to join in on? And to take that question a little bit further, does this environment in general look inviting to you? Does this look like somewhere you'd like to be? One of our participants mentioned that it seemed very inviting to them. What do you think might be making them think that? Let's take a look at some of the elements of the composition that we've been talking about and see what maybe is inviting about it. We talked a little bit about the light in the painting. Perhaps the light in the painting seems warm and inviting to us. Or perhaps it seems a bit dim and not like somewhere we'd like to be. Um, perhaps some of the colors are inviting us into the painting. We've talked about bright reds, bright blues, green vegetables. We'll notice that right here, behind what might be the cooking area, we've got bright red and bright blue again. Perhaps the colors are inviting us into this painting. Perhaps we're just hungry and we want to join in on this meal, just like one of our participants said. Oh, I wish I could have some of what they're having. Or perhaps we're just enjoying building a story about what's going on in this painting taking in all the details of the environment, which we've said perhaps looks a little bit fancy and likes it like it belongs to someone important. Taking a look at the two figures in the center and analyzing what might be going on between them. Perhaps it seems like a fun scene that we would also like to be a part of. Or perhaps it looks like something we don't want to get in the middle of. Perhaps we agree with the idea that this chef might be coming up with a way to tell this cardinal that he doesn't like the sauce and we don't want to get in the middle of the argument. What do you think? Is this a place you would like to spend some time or isn't it? And if so, why or why not? So one of the things that we like to do after we've taken a close look at all these different details in a painting is we like to ask participants in our live group, what would they title the painting? So I'm going to ask you the same question. Now that we've looked at all these different details, what might you title this painting? would love to hear what sort of title you came up with. A few of our participants from the live program came up with their own titles. One participant said, I would call this painting Bon Appetit. And I think that makes a lot of sense, um, focusing on the story we constructed about tasting something. Another suggested that it might be called How's the Soup? which focuses perhaps on the possible conflict between the two figures of this painting. Is the thing that they're tasting in here good? Is one worried about telling the other that it's not good? I would love to hear the titles that you came up with. But now that we've looked at all these details and we've thought of our own title, Let's learn just a little bit about this painting. So the painting is by Jean-Georges Weber, and the title that the artist gave it is The Marvelous Sauce. 
So what do you think about that title? Do you, does that fit what you were imagining with this painting? Does that line up with the story we were telling about this painting? This is an oil painting done on a wood panel, and it was completed in 1899. So you'll remember we talked a little bit about what time period might this painting be from. And one of our participants said perhaps the Victorian period. And that seems to line up with the date on the painting. Although, despite the fact that the painting was done in 1899, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's depicting that time, does it? We can go to all sorts of different places and time periods when we look at art and when we create art. So perhaps the artist is taking us somewhere else entirely. Well, wherever the artist is taking us, I really hope that you enjoyed going to that place together with me and looking at this work of art, spending time with its details. I hope you'll take even more time to take a close look at this painting and just look at some of the details that we didn't notice. We talked about all sorts of different things in this painting, but there's always so much more to explore. There's probably things you noticed in this painting that I didn't even touch on at all. I'm very curious what the details you might have noticed that we didn't talk about are. So please feel free to go back in the video, take more time to look. Uh, but I want to thank you for spending this time with me today, looking at this painting, and I'll be back in just a moment to wrap us up. I want to thank you so much for joining us today on behalf of the Dementia Society of America and Arts Philadelphia. I want to thank the Albright Knox for having us for this program and give a little shout out to Karen Duval who helped put this all together. I really hope you enjoyed looking at this painting with me and I hope you'll take some more time perhaps to go back and pause the video and look at some things a little bit closer. We always have such a great time looking at these paintings when they evoke these interesting stories that we can tell each other. So I really hope you enjoyed talking about this painting with me as much as I enjoyed spending this time with you. And thank you so much for joining us for Artful Insights. Hope to see you next time.